Hello, I'm Raziel, and so I'm just going to give you some things you might not know about the Kissemi versus Games Workshop case, and the things is, I'm going to talk about the actual laws involved here, and what Games Workshop can do, what they can't do, and how it would play out. So, one thing people are saying, and it's kind of incorrect, is that Mr. Kissemi would be put in a position where he is made homeless. He's going to be destitute, broke, you know, absolutely no way to live. Now, that's not true. In the US, and I believe the UK as well, a company who sues someone else, like a, a, personal per, a person, they or anyone, you cannot be sued into a point where you cannot live. You have to be able to earn money to eat, eat sleep, you know, work, do all that. They cannot put him in a position where he is in debt with his bank, or anyone else, like they cannot force him to take a loan to pay off the compensation. They cannot force that. What they'll do is garnish his money coming in. So any money he gets will be garnished to pay for the compensation. And it'll be garnished until paid or the claimant is happy with payment. So Games Workshop could say, right, we've sued you for this much and therefore you've learned your lesson uh, we can now require it. We, we can say you pay for a year, you keep your payments up for a year, we'll say it's done, we're happy, you've learned your lesson, we can move on. And this also means that when it comes to asset claiming, they cannot take anything that would be required for work. So if he had to drive to work, he would be still be allowed his car and the money for petrol and everything else to get that car going, tax, insurance, etc. I don't know if you tax cars in America, but just the way it is. And same with food, uh, rent, anything he has to pay out for, he cannot be touched for. That, that money will always be his, and there always is allowed some to actually you know, live. They cannot just take it all and say, and leave him with at just the bare minimum. They have to allow him to live a life. The other thing is people saying like, he will be made bankrupt, and, well, that's the thing I'll get to in a second, but he can no longer own a home, get a job, etc, etc, etc. Well, no, that's not true, because Games Workshop cannot do that. They cannot do that to another person when it comes to making a compensation claim and getting paid for it. That is not out of their hands. If he cannot get a home, it would be because he filed for bankruptcy. Okay? That was him. He said he was filing for bankruptcy. So that's him stymieing his own credit score himself. He didn't have to do that. He probably panicked, maybe, and said, oh, I've got a file for bankruptcy. But that kind of puts him in a bad spot when it comes to the compensation and the suitcase itself. Because if you're broke, you're more likely to lose. He got a loan out for the solicitor, or lawyer, whatever you want to call it, his attorney. And that was all on him. Yeah, I know attorneys are expensive. I get this. They are very expensive. However, him bankrupting himself hasn't put him in a good position because now he's he has ruined his own credit score if he has filed for bankruptcy. Games Workshop cannot do that. The other thing to notice is this is not a court case. It's a, a copyright claims board case. This is more arbitration rather than a court case. And things to be, t there are a lot of difference here. First, evidence doesn't need to be so severe. If it went to court, they would literally, and I mean this, if it was, say, a Lehman Russ, they would count the rivets on the Lehman Russ sort of thing. It is very, very precise when it comes to a court case. Also, if a court case would could hold a prison sentence as well. So it's not just the fines, it could also be jail time. So maybe... Games Workshop went to a copyright claims board so he would not face a sentencing that way. It's just the financial side of things. And also, if it went to court, it could have been gone for a lot, lot more. Though the compensation points still remain that they cannot put him into a position where he cannot live. And he is, you know, homeless and, you know, in that sort of position. He, the thing is with that, see, what they'll do is they're garnishing money coming in. When they garnish money coming in, it, if it's through Patreon or through some sort of you know place where money's not always the same, say being self-employed, it would be a percentage of money coming in. So it would vary from time to time. It wouldn't always be the same. It would be just 
what it would come in. Again, leaving him money to live as well. So he can still live a straight, straight, uh, quote unquote normal life, but he would still owe money to Games Workshop. Also, payment would be until fully payment or claimant is satisfied. Now, Games Workshop, in my opinion, if you hear this, would be wise to do about a year. So make him pay for a year, and once he's like made all his payments for a year, 12, month, 12 payments, go, right, we're done, we're happy, you've learned your lesson, we're happy, we'll move on now. Payment is satisfied, we'll move on. You know, it would be a goodwill gesture on their part, saying, look, we've, you've, we've, you've learned your lesson, we're, we're not going to do this again, please don't do it again. So that will stop, or it will be until fully paid. Again, it's up to the claimant on how this case goes. Now, being a copyright claims board case, not a court case, it cannot be held in precedent, precedent, I should say, for any other cases. This cannot be used again. Even if Games Workshop go again, they say, hey, we won this way last time, they will be told, yeah, not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. The only thing that could be said, held in precedent, precedent, I should say, is the fact so many claims were made at the start. But not really, because the option was always there, just no one did it before. So that's just it. Also, Games Workshop did drop, uh, consolidate all the claims into one, which would have lowered the cost of the attorney for Mr. Kasemi as well, because 12 claims by one solicitor is a lot of money, where one claim is, well, a lot, 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 lot less. So there is that. The settlement part, as far as I can see, settlement was pretty much established quite early on, all the way back in May, which means both parties were kind of in agreement there. And the thing is, Games Workshop's not been the one stretching this out, okay? Uh, a lot of people say, oh, Games Workshop do this. They stretch out lawsuits because the payment of a law is the punishment. No, Games Workshop haven't stretched this out. It has been Mr. Gisemi's attorney and his side have been stretching this out for over a month now. It was meant to be finished June 14th. It is now July the 11th. So it's not been him, not been Games Workshop stretching this out. It has been Mr. Gisemi's team. And that does say a lot actually so whether or not games workshop are willing to settle now because they came to agreement or maybe you don't know they don't want to go into discovery threat phase either party could be for this okay we do not know we just know that it has been gasemi's team that has stretched this out we know this the other thing is that like i said with the compensation they cannot stop Mr. Kasemi earning money. So, and not only that, with it being a copyright claims board case, uh, they cannot uh, serve an injunction to Mr. Kasemi stopping him 3D printing anymore. They cannot take anything away. When they did the cease and desist, that could, would have been a way to say, that would have been a legal way of stopping all his 3D printing, telling him to destroy manufacturing processes and, you know, models, etc, etc, etc. But now it's gone to a copyright claims court, which is actually quite interesting that they did this, because if it went to court, the cease and desist would still be enforced. However, going to the copyright claims board, it cannot be enforced anymore, because they cannot serve the injunction for Mr. Gassemi to destroy his 3D printing gear. And if he's making money via 3D printing, again, if we went to court case, it would be pretty much when you cannot 3D print anymore, and yeah, you got to find money elsewhere now. If we find you 3D printing, that's it. You, you know, you're going to prison. Whereas with a copyright claims board case, they cannot serve that injunction. Therefore, he can continue 3D printing and making money via 3D printing. And if he does, and if he's making a fair back whack of money, like it seemed to be he was, it means that kind of he actually is in a good spot here but he can continue making money doing something he enjoys he won't be able to 3d print games workshop models anymore that would be stupid more than anything else they cannot stop him but to me if he continued it would be stupid because whereas this cannot be held in precedent precedent if he did it again and games workshop caught him doing it again he can they can take this case to court and say look we went this way, we tried to do it the quote-unquote friendly way, and now he has basically just been a bit daft and he's doing it again. 
and they would hold that into regard and say yes you were we went through this why are you doing it again have you not learned your lesson and it would be a lot worse for him so he can continue 3d printing and if he does and i suggest he does because he seems to be doing well at it at it and making money from it i mean he can keep his patreon open well through this case he can't they cannot force him to close it he can open up his patreon as long as he doesn't do any games workshop stuff or anything from total warhammer or anything like that he can continue 3d printing and he can do the stuff he's doing you know still making money from it and they can't stop him they'll just say right you make six thousand dollars a year a month we want three thousand because it'll be ten months per each claim and it'll take about uh, <laughs> 120 years for him to pay off everything at max but honestly it'll be about 60 probably a lot less it depends how what which way it goes and if he makes even, again if he makes even more like if he gets more followers which this could help him with his if he was smart right now he would be using this to well he wouldn't have to be using the case because that would be held against him because he's being fine he's using this for financial gain but given the amount of uh, how many people have highlighted this case how many people have been talking about him he would be getting a bit more famous and if anyone asks him are you doing more how many says nope not doing it anymore i've stopped that's finished don't ask you know then he could he could potentially get more patreon patrons and make even more money so he could end up making more money through this not by this by the way this is two different things he's not making money because of this but through this so you know getting additional support from the community 3d printing community etc more people going to his patreon and he could set up his own 3d printing business through this to help pay his bills because this is the way it works when compensation is paid it'll be garnished through money earned and the more money earned the more he'll pay back so he could actually help himself here by continue 3d printing but not games workshop stuff because again they cannot help give him an injunction they cannot stop him doing this through the copyright claims board but as long as he doesn't do games workshop stuff or any other copyrighted stuff which he seems to do a lot of and i honest to god if he hears this please stop do your own stuff make your own things make proxies do all that you seem to be a creative guy do that okay that's what i would suggest make your own things make proxies you know one page rules is popular make read through the one page rule stuff make models for that okay <laughs> you can help yourself here dude all right i'm that's just for you you can help yourself here dude and i hope you know you you hope you're well in the future i'm not gonna do any say anything bad i'm only gonna tell the truth here of as i know it if it changes then i'm incorrect then fine i'll i'll you know retract so these are the things you should know and these are the things that should be going on uh hopefully hopefully like games workshop will do payment satisfied prior to the pay full payment being paid off i hope they do because it would give them a very good name right now their name is in the dirt and doing a payment satisfied even after settlement go fine you've learned your lesson you got sued for three hundred and ten thousand dollars and we're just going to say payment satisfied you've learned your lesson let's go okay don't do it again but now he can still 3d print etc and i hope they go down that route because that would be a good route for their pr right now payment satisfied for them would be a great uh, like i said it would be great for his rep their reputation they, they, yes we sued him but we satisfied the payment from day one like basically it came out we were found you know infringed upon and we just said payment satisfied a payment satisfied it doesn't always mean fully paid it just means that the claimant is happy with how much they've been paid as well so just to sum up they cannot stop him 3d printing at the moment they cannot put an injunction against him for 3d printing anymore they cannot put him on the street he, he cannot be put in that position and he will be able to make money if he did bankrupt himself that's what he done he stopped himself getting a home no one else okay those are the things you need to know and i hope you get something from this video and i hope he hears this and sort of learns from this like he can speak to his uh, attorney and say listen can i restart my patreon because 
you know, there's not going to be an injunction held out against me as long as I don't do uh, Games Workshop stuff. And hopefully his attorney will be able to advise him better than I can. I'm not a copyright lawyer at all. I study contract law. And so that's my wheelhouse. Sorry. <laughs> um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you all in the next one as well. And have a great day. Uh, if you want to save money on your wargaming, because you know, because you might want to buy something that's not Games Workshop anymore, you want to buy something else, Mantic, Parabellum Games, uh, War Cradle, it's all down below in winninggames.com, uh, .co uk. They're fantastic. Up to 20% off your models and free delivery off to £20. There's also Forbidden Planet for all your geeky merchandise toys, comics, uh, books, DVDs, uh, all that cool stuff that everyone loves, board games, and there is also my merchandise, stickers, cups, mugs, t-shirts, everything everyone else does. Uh, my comics, which very few other people do, buy them. I hope you enjoy them. If you do, they, I, it's all my own art. No AI art in that at all. I wrote it myself as well. There is Guy Forge. Always give that guy a click because he's a good friend of mine. And I don't get money from uh, advertising him. I just want to help a good friend out. And finally, Patreon myself because business. Bye-bye.